In this video, we're going to build a dashboard. Firstly, in the dashboard section of my studio, I'm going to select new, which will create a blank dashboard. The first thing I'm going to do is click on the title and give my dashboard a name. Wherever we click on the dashboard, the relevant options will appear at the top. So here in the dashboard title, I have the option to select a background color, a text color, Choose the title font size, the title size, the title width, and also I have the option to add an image which will appear at the top right hand side here. The way we build up a BIM dashboard is to add objects. To do so, we're going to go to the dashboard options and click on add an object. Here we'll see a list of the different objects we have available. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a query. I'll be taken to the data sources library where I need to locate the query I wish to add. I'll select it and click on select. We'll then be taken back to our dashboard where our new query will have been added. When I click on this query, you'll notice that the widget options now appear at the top here. I can show or hide the header. In this case, I'm going to hide the header if I was to keep the header, I could choose its size. I choose the border color. In this case, I'm going to select a different lighter gray. We can hide the border if we like, choose to have rounded edges. Select the widget position and size, a background color. And this button here will hide the loading icon, which you'll notice when we look at the uh, dashboard later on. I can select my widget and choose to resize it and reposition it to where I wish. On each widget you will have this menu here which will have various options. In this case for this query widget we can select to edit the query which will take it back to the query builder. We also have the option to edit the configurations. These are the chart configurations we saw earlier on in the query builder. In this case, I'm going to choose to increase the label size, which we can see here. One of the ways in which BIME helps making a dashboard easier is the capacity to select an existing widget and to duplicate it by simply copying and pasting. Here, we know that the duplicated query will contain all the same formatting options as the original. All we would need to do now is to select the widget, select edit query, we'll be taken back to the query builder where we can change our query. In this case, I'm going to swap out the existing measures for shipping cost. When I click on save, we'll return to the dashboard where we'll see that the query has been updated. Let's now add some more queries to our dashboard. Again, we'll follow the same process. Go back to our data sources, find the query we wish to add and select it. Here, I'm going to position it just underneath these two KPIs and increase the size. For this widget, I'm going to go to the widget header options, choose a different background color, and text color. I'm also going to hide the border in this case. And here you have our new query. Okay, let's just quickly speed this up while we add another query to our dashboard. Here we go. We'll place it where we want and resize it as we want. We also have the option to copy, paint and size formats from one widget to another in the dashboard options here. For example, if I want to apply the same formatting options from this widget to this widget, I'll firstly select this widget, go to dashboard, paint format, and then click on the second widget to apply the same formatting options. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added another two queries to my dashboard. The next thing we're going to look at are the other objects that we have available. 
Again, we'll go to the dashboard options. We have the capacity to add an image, a text box, and also we can have multiple tabs in our dashboard. In terms of interactivity options, we can add a data filter. In this case, I'm going to add product category. We have different ways to display this data filter. Firstly, we can have it either in place, in a drop down, in a panel on the right, or in a button list, which is what I'm going to select for this. This data filter is considered as a widget as well. I'm going to place this at the top right and I'm going to take off the header. Now when I click on one of the product categories, we'll see our dashboard update accordingly. Next up, we have a time filter. Again, we have different options of how we can display this. Firstly, we have the same options uh, in drop down, in place, or in a panel on the right. I'm going to have this in a panel on the right. And we also have different ways to render it, either as a calendar, as we just saw, common ranges, or advanced ranges, which is what I'm going to select. Let's just resize this, take off the header, and place it over on the right hand side with our data filter like so. Now when I click on my time filter we'll see our draw on the right hand side appear and now I can select one of the simple options in this case last year or indeed one of the advanced options The next object we're going to add is called time travel. But before we do, I'm going to explain when and how you might use this option. Firstly, to demonstrate, I'm going to apply a date range in my time filter of three years in the past. All my queries will update, but we'll notice that this query here is blank in terms of the result. The reason for this is that this query contains two date range calculated measures, one based on one year in the past and another based on two years in the past. So when I apply a time filter, which is based on three years in the past, obviously this is outside of the date ranges contained in this query. So this is where time travel comes into play. It's useful wherever you have any queries that contains applied date ranges. So I'm going to add my time travel to my dashboard. I'm going to leave it in place and I'm going to have it at a year level. I'm going to take off the header and resize it. And then position it over on the right hand side. Okay, so let's put back our time filter to all history before we apply the time travel. Okay, so this is the original state of our dashboard. What I can do now is I can change the time reference. That's the reference at which our calculations will be uh, applied. So in this case, if I was to select 2014, the date ranges applied in my queries will update accordingly. That's to say, this query here that contains these two date range calculated measures based on one and two years in the past will now be calculated according to the time reference selected here. So one year and two years in the past from 2014 will be 2013 versus 2012. I hope that's clear. The next two objects we're going to add will allow the dashboard viewers to change both the measures and the attributes contained within these dashboard queries. Firstly, change measure, which I'm going to apply to the sum of my profit contained in these two queries here. I can display it in a drop down or in a button list and even restrict it to a list of measures I choose. 
So let's hide the widget header, reduce the size, and bring it over to the right hand side with the other interactivity options. So I can now choose to select a different measure to my profit and see the relevant queries update. And with my change attribute object, I can do the same thing with my attributes. In this case, with the customer segment attribute contained in this query here. So let's format and resize this widget. Place it over here. And now I can change from customer segment to a different attribute and see this update accordingly. Next up, we're going to add a top and bottom object. Here we can choose to activate top and bottom, select a particular strategy and apply it to a particular measure. Let's do as we did before, put this down here. And now we can choose to see the top number of elements in relation to shipping cost. Here we go. The next two objects, shape and updated at, allow you to add different shapes like this arrow to your dashboard and also see the date of the last update of the data. The last two objects we can add are global variables and bookmarks. Global variables we'll look at in a separate video, so let's finish on bookmarks. Bookmarks allow you to alter the view of your dashboard and then bookmark it for your viewers. So in this case, I'm going to apply a data filter. I'm going to change my profit to order quantity. And I'm going to change my customer segment to order priority. What I can do now is I can add a bookmark and create a bookmark from this current state. What I can also do is I can pin this as the default view when the dashboard is loaded. So let's add that. Put it down at the bottom here. And I can reset. And reapply my bookmark like so. All of these different objects we've added can be excluded from the different widget queries. So here, by selecting this widget and going to its options, I can choose to exclude filters. Here I can choose which ones I wish to exclude from this particular query.